One of my uh, favorite guests, young mind in the world of sports. Um, I've had his back for a while because I'm very impressed with him. I genuinely like him, like his knowledge, like his demeanor, like his commitment to excellence. Um, and I'm a fan of his, and I think he's got a bright young future, and I'm looking forward to helping him any way that I can. Please welcome, uh, during an earlier conversation I had, by the way, let me introduce this right. Um, I was wearing a different outfit because I interviewed him a few hours ago because um, I had to tape the interview because I got the game coming up. Uh, but he's the co-founder of Enjoy Basketball and the co-host of the Through the Wire podcast. He's my man. He's the one and only Kenny Beecham. He is me talking to him a little bit earlier about the NBA Finals and beyond. Check it out. What's up, Big Time? How are you, man? What's going on, youngster? How you doing? I'm, fe I'm feeling good, man. I, I do love the rebrand, Stephen A. I got to admit, having the Stephen A. Smith show, I, I like the way it sounds. Yeah, man, I had to do it like that. Every time somebody's Googling, they ain't Googling no mercy. They Googling Stephen A. You know what I'm saying? I just came to my senses. I thought that was the wise thing to do. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, but let's get to you. By the way, proud of you. Proud of the work that you continue to do, man. Keep continuing to shine. That's why I love Thank letting you. everybody know uh, what you know about the game of basketball and beyond. That's why I like like having you on this show let's get right to it you and I are talking right before game four of the NBA finals what have you seen in these first three games of this NBA final series what has it told you both about the Denver Nuggets and about the Miami Heat well from the Denver Nuggets aspect I, I think we see why most people had them as a heavy favorite going into the series um, even the game that they lost, I think they walked away with it, saying, like, the only thing that we're missing right now is the effort. KCP talked about it. Mike Malone talked about it. And then you saw in game three, the effort was there. There was only one time that I remember watching where there was this big uh, miscommunication between player A and player B. And it was like Jamal Murray pointing at KCP. KCP raised his hand. And that was about the extent of it. We know that Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray's two-man game is like that. And we're seeing the night in and night out. And, and honestly... The Miami Heat just don't have enough firepower, I think, to to really take three of the next what five games is, yeah. is, is gonna or three of the next four, right? Three of the next three of the next right. five, yeah. Yeah. um, to to make it happen. No, three of the next four, three of the next four. I mean, three, three, the next the, four. three of the next four. But let me say this to you, man. I gotta tell you, I've been wondering about this too, Kenny. And I love me some Jimmy Butler. I know you do too. Blue collar, hard worker, worked his way up to stardom, you know, departed from the Philadelphia 76ers. This is his second NBA Finals appearance, his third Eastern Conference Finals appearance in four years. We know what this dude is. We know what he means to the game of basketball and in particular, and more specifically, the Miami Heat. But when we use the word superstar, that's where – question marks come into play because we know LeBron is a superstar. We know Steph Curry is a superstar. We know guys like that. I mean, these are superstars. Giannis Antetokounmpo, even though Jimmy Butler's taking them out. I mean, we know he's a superstar, okay? When you think about Jimmy Butler and you see the limitations against the Denver Nuggets, particularly considering the leaning on, on this need to get to the free throw line because so much of his offensive success is predicated on his ability to get to the line. Have we reached a point where respect and deference needs to be given to Jimmy Butler, but we need to stop short? of saying superstar considering what's happened to him over the last several postseason games and in particular this NBA final series? It's tough to say because I, I think I would still probably give him that title. Uh, I'm, I'm not a guy that's going to linger on excuses. I think Jimmy Butler is the same way, right? But when we watched that series against the New York Knicks, um, where there had been game three, game four, we had the moment with Josh Hart kind of collided with his ankle. And I, I honestly do believe that the ankle is – causing a lot of problems so for Jimmy right now. So do I. Um, and, and I think we're seeing that we're like their offensive the goal right now is to let Bam be the facilitator, let Bam be the guy that's taking a lot of the shots. Well, through the first series and a half before that injury, I mean, there was nobody in the world that could stay in front of Jimmy Butler. And one thing that feels like it is a point of emphasis for, for the Denver Nuggets is to stay down in that pump fake from Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man averaged nine free throw attempts a game in the regular season. He only gets more in the postseason. Right. But as we see through the first three games, it's a struggle. Game one, they shot two free throws as a team. That's right. Right. So I, I think what you're saying right now has some merit to it where, you know, he is over overcompensating by trying to draw the free throw more often than not. Right. But I honestly think that the game plan from the Denver Nuggets to to make him be a shooter is working out to, to the greatest possible. 
where they allow him and Bam Adebayo to take the shots that they need right. because we don't want you to get into this painted area because that's right. where the fouls are going to happen, A, and that's where you are at your best. So, Bam, you can take your, your 12 to 15 footer. We'll live with those. Jimmy Butler, you can shoot one for four from three every single game. Right. We'll be fine. We're going to take away all the other stuff, and the other stuff for the last series was Caleb Martin. It was Max Struess. And as we see through the first three games, those dudes haven't stepped up the way you want them to. That's what, And that's been depressing, to be quite honest with you, because we all know that the, the Denver Nuggets have the better roster. They're the better team. They were the number one seed throughout the majority, vast majority of this season in the Western Conference for a reason. They have not one but two stars, because I'll get into Jamal Murray with you in just a mm-hmm. second. <clears throat> Excuse me, when we're talking about stars. But staying with Miami for a quick second here, I'm going like this, Bam out of bio, 7 for 20. 21 shooting. I understand that you've had some decent games. You're obviously better than average. You're an all-star caliber player. You just ain't Jokic. There's no crime in that, to be honest with you. There really is no crime in that. When you look at Jimmy Butler, okay, that's their strategy against him. But I'm looking at a, I, I mean, I'm down here in Miami, Kitty. I got to tell you, I've already, you know me, I mean, I got the key to South Beach. You know that. I know politicians. <laughs> I know I know politicians. I know local PD. I know members of the Sheriff's Department. I put out an APB. I had them put out an APB for Kayla Martin. I don't know what what the hell is going on? Can't find the brother. Yeah. After he played the yeah. way that he played in the Eastern Conference Finals, Max Struess, he shoots, what is it, 0 for 10 in game one, came out and hit like three threes in the first quarter in game two, and then we can't find him again yesterday in game three. I'm just, I'm just wondering right now, when you look at Miami, should Damian Lillard be somebody that they're in – tireless pursuit of to get to south beach should that be the absolutely ticket? absolutely I, I think so um the, the question is whether or not portland is going to do a thing we've talked about it for years at this point um and and i've always been a dude that's like hey i'm i'm not gonna try to force it because we can only do so much as people just watching it right if dame says he wants to stay in the front office say they want him to stay then he's gonna stay right but I mean, you, you look at it. I mean, the, the questions that he answered over the last 48 hours. I mean, Miami Heat was top of mind when he was asked about potential teams. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, if I am the Portland Trailblazers, I feel like the potential package that I can get from a Damian Lillard, it's more. Because we talk about but from who though, Kenny? Players. You can't you can't just throw that out, Kenny. From who? Give us names. I, give us the team. I, Who's gonna give them more? I don't know, but th- this is what this is what I'm saying about the Miami Heat's trade package. Right now, we're looking at with Tyler Hero and mm-hmm. one of the other roster fillers to make the salary match, and then they have uh, two to three tradable first round picks. Okay, this is the Miami Heat we're talking about. This team has been perennially a uh, uh, playoff team, a conference final team. We're talking about the 23rd over. I'm trading Damian Lillard for Tyler Hero and a 23rd overall pick every single season. That's not something I'm interested in. That's now, true. I think that. I'm not saying that they missed the boat when it came to trading Dame, but there are a lot more suitors for Dame a year and a half ago when they were trying to figure out what's going on with Ben Simmons and the 76ers had draft capital and Ben Simmons or anything like that. So I I don't know what Portland is going to do, but if I'm the Miami Heat, absolutely I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling because this is the second playoff run in a row with Tyler Hero has been injured. As great as he was in the bubble to help them get to the the finals last year in the conference finals, he couldn't Mm -hmm. play. And now he's trying, but they keep saying he's having a swelling. I mean, we just extended this man. He's getting $30 million a year and he's sitting on the sideline with a bucket hat on and not getting buckets in the game. Right. Well, I got news for you. You have to start thinking about it. I got news for you, Kenny. If I'm the Miami Heat, it ain't just Tyler Hero I'm willing to give up. I'm also Mm. willing to give up Gabe Vincent. It's not just Tyler Hero and Gabe Vincent that I'm willing to give up. Guess what? I might entertain uh, giving up Duncan Robinson, too. I mean, mm-hmm. I might do that, even though I like the development. He's learned how to handle the ball a little bit, get into the rack a little bit more. I get all of that. But, hell, he wasn't playing until the postseason. So, guess what? Mm-hmm. I might consider that along with those picks. If I'm Philadelphia, um, I might move Tobias Harris. And I might give mm-hmm. up Tobias Harris, whether it's Shake Milton or DeAnthony Melton, along with Tobias Harris. As long as I'm holding on to Maxi and Embiid, I think yep. I'm all right. I think I'm all right. I'm 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 doing something like that if I'm the Philadelphia 76. I ain't giving up Maxi. I ain't giving yeah. up Embiid. But everybody else, I'm open to talk about that. To that, you say no, what? That's, that's respectable. But I, I think that the, the market has set itself when it comes to these superstar players, whether it been the Kevin Durant trade, that was mm-hmm. Mikel Bridges, who looks like a stud and four first-round picks and two swaps, or or whether it been been um, the Paul George trade from a few years back that was Shea Gears Alexander, who's blossoming to a superstar himself, plus four first-round picks and two swaps. That's the type of market we've set for a superstar caliber player. And some of the teams that would be interested in Damian Lillard don't have that. Right. The right. 76 have Maxi, but I'm not trading Maxi because he's our piece to win the championship. Right. right. 
so th- that's how that's how it is. I just don't know how the market is going to play for but games. You talk, I mean, but you signed an extension, which is great. But you're talking about a market like. Okay, the market has been set. Sometimes the market can be set in such a way that everybody's saying, oh, hell no, we ain't going that route. Let's take the NFL, mm-hmm. for example, for a quick second. You look at Deshaun Watson, he gets $230 million, $230 million guaranteed. Baltimore said, hell no, we ain't giving that to Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson tried to hold their feet to the fire. Meanwhile, Kyler Murray got $189 uh, million guaranteed. Jalen Hurts got $179 million guaranteed. Russell Wilson settled for $165 million guaranteed. And all of a sudden, here comes Lamar Jackson. Jackson. He ends up settling for around those dollars as well. So what I'm saying to you is that sometimes that market that was set can be altered because people say, you crazy. We ain't that damn yeah. stupid. We ain't going to do that. And I think that's what we're going to start seeing in the National Basketball Association. Let me transition back to the NBA for a quick second. If we're going to talk about Jimmy Butler in the regard that we talked about him in terms of us knowing he's not 100%, that that ankle is still bothering him, that he could do a lot more if he wasn't grimacing all the damn time because he's clearly trying to rough his way through it. What are we to say about Jamal Murray? Because Mm -hmm. here's here's my analysis on Denver. Jokic is big time, and we know that, and we know what he brings to the table. But when we look at Nikola Jokic, we say, damn, what a great, great player. When we look at Jamal Murray getting off, we say, damn, the Denver Nuggets are unbeatable. That's how we feel about the Denver Nuggets. So what should that say to the basketball world, Kenny Beecham, about Jamal Murray? Well, I think a lot of it deals with the fact that in, in the regular season, Jamal Murray is just he's, – he's a – a guy that hasn't really been in all-star conversations, right? For his NBA regular season career, he's averaged 17 points per game, four rebounds, four assists. This season, he averaged 20 points per game in the regular season. There was 42 players in the National Basketball Association that averaged more points than Jamal Murray. But what has Jamal Murray showed us, whether it been in 2020 or this season, when the playoffs come around, he's one of those guys. We talk about how Kawhi Leonard steps it up. We talk about how Jimmy Butler stupidly locked in. We talk about Rajon Rondo from a decade ago. Jamal Murray is in that, that conversation now. Because that 17, 4 and 4 point per game average for the first couple years of his career is 25, 6 and 5 now in the playoffs. It's triple double in the finals when in a must win situation, if you ask me. It's in the bubble where everybody said, oh, that's not real. He, not gonna, he can't do this all the time. He's showing right now that he, he can do this. When he went down with his ACL injury, he was afraid that the Denver Nuggets were going to trade him away. He saw himself as damaged goods, and Mike Malone and all of his teammates had to go in and reassure him that you are the key factor for us to win a championship. And right now, they're two games away from making that a reality. Mm. Last year, right before the playoffs, he was clear. He was clear to play ball. And remember, Nikola Jokic just won an MVP with Compazzo as his starting point guard. He just won a, a, a... uh, MVP where Austin Rivers is win- no disrespect to Austin Rivers, got a lot of love for him, but he's starting in playoff games, right? And Jamal Murray was clear to play, but he said to, he said to the media, I do not personally, I know what the doctors are saying, I don't personally feel like I'm ready, whether it be mentally or physically. And he got some pushback on that from the media, mm. whether it be Denver media or the people on Twitter, Jamal, y- Jokic is here, he's ready to play. Mm. And they came to this season, shut all of that up. Here we are in the finals, two games away. Two games away. So, and for the majority of the series, he's been the second best player on the court, regardless of what jersey you have. On. Without question. And, la- and in game three, he might have been the best player on the court. His own 30-point triple-double, 34-10-10 and 10 in game three. Mm-hmm. And then 